As Trey Young was in the midst of a career night against the Pistons a few nights ago, no one would have thought that a simple pass fake on a drive would result in a whistle and a traveling call. Especially in the NBA, where cynics seem to think nothing is a travel anymore, what amounted to a ho-hum play should have gone on without so much as a batted eyelash. But let's look at what Young does here to see if we caught referee Tony Brothers buying into the myth and calling what he thought he saw, or did the reality merit the whistle? The key is, and always has been, when does the dribble end? In this case, it's the moment Young brings his left hand to the ball. As we can see, the left is down and that is the gather step. NBA rules dictate this foot does not count in the remaining steps he has left. The right foot becomes the pivot foot, and at every level it is allowed to leave the floor so long as the player releases the ball into a shot or a pass before it returns to the floor. This is the traditional step and a half that everyone knows and loves at all levels of the game. Let's watch it again from a different angle. The gather occurs with the left foot down, and then a simple 1-2 for the layup. The look away pass fake along with extending the steps might have confused brothers and he decided it just didn't look right. But this play is pretty common and there is very little excuse. None of the other refs had it, in fact the lead official was going to call a foul for an and one, but let the perceived travel have precedence since it supposedly happened first. It really feels like the work Devin and I are doing to expose more people to what is really happening on the court is having a huge effect and it appears we've still got a little more work to do. The rules of basketball are pretty straightforward. When you look at the NBA rulebook, it's divided up into only 13 rules. So why are we always getting into so many fights about what the refs are or aren't calling on the floor? Nothing triggers people on Twitter more than a sweet looking move by an NBA star that somehow appears as if it's a travel. And I spend a ton of time explaining what the rules are and why the refs make the calls that they do. So that's what this series is all about. Devin Williams and I got together on the court along with a college referee to discuss the plays that you guys get so upset about. We want to get to the truth of what the rule really is, dispel the myths, and once and for all, establish what is legal. Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here, and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. I am so excited to be on the court today with Devin Williams, who we all know, and Dorian Lee, the guy that set the Twitter world on fire with his demonstration of a move that is perfectly legal, but no one wanted to believe it. So he had to fly all the way over from Atlanta to LA to get on the court with us to film some stuff. So Dorian, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. What do you want to show us right now? We're going to talk a little bit about a lot of things, but primarily we're going to talk about the spin and a spin step back that we've already kind of got cleared the rulings on these years ago, but it's still new to the general audience. A spin step back. Love it. Let's do it. So I'm here in and out. Turn one, two. All right, I'm going to do a different, not a snatch. I'm going to actually do a plant. Like, like one of the things I think we need to focus on, when I send this over to NBA reps, right? I got good friends who've been in the league for a long time. When I send it over, I don't ask if it's a travel. I ask how to make it legal, if it is. So it's a totally different conversation. So one of the things that I, throughout the years, have gotten a better understanding of when the ball stops, when the ball is a completed dribble. So the ball is a completed dribble when I cannot put it back on the ground legally, right? So for instance, if I have my hand right here, obviously I can't put it back on the ground legally, so it's a dead dribble right here. Follow, all right? If I palm it, it's a dead dribble, right? Wherever I palm it, right? Or put both hands on the ball, it's a dead dribble. So we start to count there. So the reason this isn't, it's a late gather. So I'm all the way around, but it's lifted, right? So I am one, two, and even if I was in, even if I was uh, in the NBA, it wouldn't be a travel anyway, right? So here, if I gather, this is allowed. Zero step, one, 
two, and I'm into my shot. All right, do that last part one more time because I know people are, I can hear them already <laughs> yelling uh, about the gather because that becomes a thing between the different leagues and different levels. So let's see that again one more time. All right, first of all, if it's quick, turn, gather, one, two. Yes, late right. gather. Now, you don't have, you're not worried about this notion of controlling the ball across that spin. No, because I can put it back down, so. I know. I, just right. want, I feel like that's what triggers people. They feel like that move you just did there is, a, is the dribble's then is over, even though you can continue dribbling. Right? That's it. All right, we gotta make that really, really clear that it's not ending the dribble when you control the ball across the spin move with your hand on top of the ball. See, right? I think the biggest thing, and Devin can attest to this, I think directional issues is what causes us to believe something is a travel in that. It's just direction. So if I do this same move, right, and I actually do the spin, and the reason I came up with it, if I was doing this against a big who still had length, I wanted to look as if I'm about to spin to the basket, get him to eat, and then bounce back. Yes. All right, that's why I do it, all right? So the problem is people think, okay, that one looks okay, a little iffy, but we'll, we'll take it. But if I did this and then went back to the spot I came, it would be an issue, all right? So again, if I did that one, turn and then go back little, literally to the spot I came, it would be it would be a huge issue. But same amount of steps. Same amount of steps. Same move, just different same direction. Thing. I think it's the same amount of steps. Honestly, if you did a regular spin move. Same thing, basket. absolutely. Do that again. Do Thank that you. again in like real time. That's yeah. it. That's exactly. exactly it. Everyone wants to see this happen Thank and you. you go up just like a normal, but once you change but the vector. But the, also the argument is that a lot of people say that you have to one. jump off a of one, yes. but that's not, I don't believe that's true either. Yeah. That'll so, just be one step. They have to jump off a two, isn't that the argument? Well, no, no, no. A lot of people say that you have to jump off a one off of this spin move right but here. Let, let's, let's but I don't believe it. Let's clarify when you do have to jump off one. Okay. You have to jump off one if I do this. If you, if you stop doing this. If I, if I pick up and control the ball early. So okay. that's the issue. So here, what Devin just did, I that's one step. Right. So I still have the up and under off of that, which if y'all want to put the most controversial move that y'all put out for a while, if y'all want to put that into this, it's still just two steps. So I can do this, up, turn, and yep. then step under. Right, and I, th I think we've got that clear. A lot of people watch it. I think a lot of people understand it now, right? The notion of pivot, pivot, and then lift the pivot as yep. long as you release However, it. And However, like it there was stand. one that you did very similar that blew up the internet. Can okay. you show us that one? Yeah, so that's the pro hop. So what I did, right? First of all, I started it with a fake pro hop, where I did this, land, and then I put it off the glass, right? So that was an issue, or outside hand. Okay, and again, there's no bearing about how, how far you travel on that hop, no, no, right? How that, high you move on that. that. It's just a step, right? It's, it, it's all contingent on this, 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 or whatever form of control, okay, you wanna, you wanna use. All right. All right. So what we did, I took a pro hop to the middle of the floor. And as soon as I landed, I took a open slide step. So it's like a, a slight step. And then I was going to the basket. So everybody went crazy, but I still don't know why. <laughs> because you can, you can do this, right? Now, the argument was, it was this. Most people expect me to use what foot now, right? Oh. Nobody would have said anything. Right, and the shot fake. Right, and the shot fake. But I did this and open step, pop, and that became the issue. Right, and it was very meticulous when you watch exactly when you gathered and exactly the, 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 the feet landing at the exact same time. And kept my hand on top, so it was here. Yeah, and then it was here, right? right, versus. Now, is that move just from a practical standpoint, is it awkward or is it simply not awkward? No, it's, it's everything. I mean, obviously, this was awkward at first for James Harden right, until he continued to work on it, okay. right? Because it was a misdirectional step back and something that we've you know, talked about for years. Misdirection starts to cloud the vision of whether or not it's a travel. So it's no problem for me to do this. Step back, right? right. No problem for that. Right. Or even do this. So now one, two, three, doesn't look funny. But if I do this, <laughs> yeah. it becomes an issue. Well, the thing is, off the same thing as you just said, I can bring it here, 
Thank you. Make a dropper or whatever I want. Thank so you. A Thanks. lot of different things you can do. Right. So, so I think, hold on, but let, let me let me actually cover this. So a lot of things that people are, I read all the comments a lot because I, I at the end of the day we're just trying to help. So what people do, they have a problem with the up and under with this one because they said, oh, you're switching pivots or whatever. But we're not switching pivots, no. are we? We're going up, boom, and right. just jumping off of this one. There right? is this weird misconception that when you when you step through and lift, this becomes the pivot all of a sudden. It doesn't. Though. When it's not, it, the rule states you can. This is the pivot, and you can lift up. But and I'm not quite clear why that is a common misconception that all of a sudden they think that you're switching because you're not going. Okay, you're, you're not going like this, this and then doing because this. Because to the to the normal consumer, right? Yeah. The, the normal person watching. They cannot determine when the gather took place, when the control takes place, beginning or end, okay. early or late. Okay. That's the big issue. Huge. That's the biggest part of the beginning. Now, but at the end, once we are doing this stuff, right now we know the, 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 the dribble's ended. This is the pivot, and <laughs> to do this, we have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, right? Absolutely. He's going like he's going like this. He's doing this, this, and he goes. And then does a sky hook, right? Well, I had a problem with it then. Absolutely. Right, not a problem at all. And I, and I did that. I did well, that remember, I was remember, before we started to add the athleticism to the game, it wasn't hard for him to do it because he was more closely rooted to the actual rule. Mm -hmm. Versus now, we've become so creative. We've gone through the N one phase. We watched Devin Hezzy everybody to death. So now <laughs> you you're coming with a different viewpoint, and you're so far away from the rule book. The key is, like I said it before, 100% of the players that I've trained, including NBA, WNBA, high-level international, have never read the rule book, period. And what they do, they end up conflating the travel definition for the start of a play, the travel definition for receiving a pass, and the travel definition upon completion of the play. See, those are three different definitions, but they'll take a piece from the first, yeah. first one Add it to the end, add it to the middle one. Oh, you can't do this. Everyone knows. No, no, read the rules. I think that was what's most amazing to me um, that kind of stopped me in my tracks is the fact that people swear by what they learn at the YMCA for the rest of their life. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, and a lot of guys at the YMCA, and there's no offense to anybody, but a lot of them don't have a high understanding of basketball, mm -hmm. you know, and so like they, kids take that, and when they see something different when they're 30, no, no way that could be. Yeah. You know, no way that could be legal, you know. So. Right. That's why we are here. I was one of them. I used to, I used to think it was travel, too. So Yeah, yeah. everybody learned an up and under off of two feet, right? right. And because of the, the worry yeah. of the travel. Yeah. And it's actually a revelation when we finally see that in the 70s and the 80s, they were doing these things. Absolutely. And we just didn't sort of understand that. And uh, now we got all this uh, one-footed three-pointers that, that James Harden <laughs> is doing, uh, which excites me not as much as you. But um, yeah, I just don't think it's happening. Is there any, so we talked about the spin move. We talked about the pro hop. Is there any other kind of uh, move that you've developed over the years that are, might be provided? Yeah, well, I mean, we got a bunch of different things. Now, this is a simple one, but this is one that really gets people. Uh, when I was teaching years ago, I, once I did a roll crossover, I never put the ball back down on the ground. So I would do this, coming from this thing. I would do it in and out. I would roll, Yeah, and then I would go. Almost every time the parent was like, no, no, no. You can't show them that. You can't show them that, that's a trap, right? Now it doesn't seem like much, but if you, if you do it and it's from distance, people are gonna assume it's a travel, but it's a roll and it's a late pickup. Right, I think, so I'm gonna share this with you guys. Not knowing the rules is like shorten your understanding of basketball, which is ultimately shortening your bag. Uh, a lot of you guys like dribbling and all that type of stuff. You got to think about this. How do I get, how do I make somebody fall, right? A lot of you want to make somebody fall. You break them from a slide to a run. When you get somebody running, then that's the, the highest chance you have of making somebody fall. So now if I can like let the ball ride out and pick up speed at this point, boom, I can allow like, not only am I like running with the ball, but I'm covering a lot of distance. So now when I broke you from a slide to a run, boom, I stopped back here. You know, now you're creating that separation. But a lot of people, they just can't understand the rules. They don't understand. You can take as many steps as you want in between dribbles. But, right. you know, now people just see James Harden doing all this type of stuff and they think it's a travel, which I think that we should cover in the next video for sure. I think so. Absolutely. Now, now let me ask you this, though. This is when we start getting into the iffy territory for most people. So if I roll it and I do that, 
most people will call a travel. Mm -hmm. Right? Do that one more time. Right? So if I do the same thing, I can do a cross, or I can do an in and out cross, and I do that. Might look like an extra step at the end yeah. there. Okay. But, but, it, but, it's, but it's not hanging down at the ball, right? I can do spin outs yeah. and then get into those shots. You feel me? Yes. So it's, it's, those are the things that, that those little things. Right. right. So the problem you have is you're relying on the referee to be able to process where the ball is in your hand. You're letting it spin. And you can see Absolutely. the spin move and the feet. And he's got to worry about the re the defense and all those things. Three seconds if he's on if in the slot. So I get it at certain levels, at certain amount of experience. They it just looks like a travel, and they're just going to always call it. So that, that gets us to the last part of this puzzle. Sometimes is if you if the notion is the ref is going to call it, then it is a travel, even though it doesn't. It won't be a good call. But see, this is the part that most people don't know about that. The referees are open. BMW, Lance Blanks, Travis Mays, Joey Wright, in the late 80s at Texas, used to perform the longest jump stop in the history of basketball. And I literally mean covering 12 feet. It was yeah. everybody called travel. So Tom Penders, who was the coach at the time, told them to go to the referees before the game mm -hmm. and demonstrate. Now, when you demonstrate, you ask the question again. All right. Based on the rules, this is a good point. This should be this should be legal, but I want you to make sure that I'm doing it right. Not, hey, am I doing it wrong, Mr. Ref? No. Make sure I'm doing this right. So now the onus is on the referee to make that call, the correct call. Right. Yeah. But you can go to referees before. That's no, they're not. They're not the, the you know the president the you know the police you, you can go to them and also yeah. also before games refs come up to the coaches and the and the captains and remind and tell them like, okay if you put a hand, hand in the back we're gonna call a foul like they do stuff like that okay. now, I think that's a good opportunity for you to talk to them or even before so, oh, so. by the way I will attest to that too at the high school level I did that and the referees are 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 not notorious they're notorious in L.A. for not being friendly or open but it was easy before the game exactly like you said to talk to them about that and show them certain things and they were like okay yeah that's that's fine you know and then, and then they wouldn't call it if, if we ex executed it right so really important point absolutely i think the biggest point of that is how you approach them and the way you describe it is perfect that way there's no defensiveness and they're and they're and they are open well i think we got it uh i can't thank you enough dorian for coming on here all the way out here to break that stuff down for us really important stuff Devin, also great stuff to demonstrate and uh, thank you all for being out there and watching as well. And let's all get better at this. Let's everybody understand the rules better. Let's everybody call the game better. And we'll all have a better product and a better thing at every level, at every, all the way across the world. Well, thank you again for coming on the show. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, sports fans, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel. We're a conversation. You in? Are you in, guys? Yep. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to B-Ball Breakdown so you can get alerted right away when we drop a new video. This season will be filled with incredible content, so don't miss it. You in?